Thank you for tuning in to Macroview Television and welcome to a brand new edition of Taiwan Outlook, the program that presents the people and their stories on Taiwan. I'm your host, Wu Rei Guo. Do you like glass art? And when was the last time they went to a glass art exhibition? We're going to find out more about this wonderful world of glass art on today's program because we are delighted to have as our special guest, Ms. Toots Zinsky, who's a well-known glass artist from the United States to talk about those issues and much more. Welcome to our program, Toots. Thank you. It's a real pleasure for me to be here in Taiwan. It's my first, it's my first time in, in Taiwan, and uh -huh. I'm, I've been looking forward to it. It was a real pleasure to get the invitation to come here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. And uh, certainly we've you know, read and learned a lot about you. But please, at the beginning of the program, tell us a little bit about your own background. I always wanted to be an artist. I actually first wanted to be a dancer, and then okay. I became a very serious musician because there was no place to take dance lessons. Mm -hmm. And when I discovered that I really had no talent for composing music, I turned and my focus to my visual artwork. Good. And, um, oh. and wound up at College for Art, Rhode Island School yes. of Design. Yes. And, and it was there that I discovered glass. I had. Yes. Never thought about yeah, it, considered it. Yes. I, of course, I always admired glass uh -huh. with, in churches with stained glass windows <laughs> and was am amazed by the colors and, and the way that the light projected through them and cast colors all across the room. But um, it actually wasn't even on the course list at Rhode Island School of Design when I, when I enlisted to go there. Uh -huh. So um, it was a wonderful discovery. Uh -huh. And it's actually what kept me at the school. Exactly. And we understand that you have been focused on the wonderful world of glass since you were 19. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us what were some of the attractiveness of, you know, glass that really had you focus on, you know, this field for all these many years? Please. Well, my initial attraction was the fact that and my introduction to glass was through glass blowing. So, okay. of course, people are always constantly moving when, mm -hmm. they're, when they're blowing glass. And yes. it requires a team of people working together. Mm -hmm. And when I first came upon the glass studio, it had just, mm -hmm. they had just finished building it. Okay. And I was just spellbound. There, there was hot glass being swirled through the air. The music was thumping. Um, they were making a film that day, so they were all in crazy costumes. And uh -huh. it was just sort of, you know, wild fun, for okay. one thing. I'd never seen anything like it. The furnaces were roaring. And, and what fascinated me was that there were 12 people in pretty close quarters, but they weren't bumping into each other at all was like this in really remarkable, spontaneous choreography. So it appealed to my, you know, love of dance and movement okay. and, and just my love of music and excitement and, and having fun. Yes, <laughs> so, of course. Yes. Um, and so I was captivated. And I had been considering uh, leaving school and uh -huh. instead uh, going to medical school, I okay. thought perhaps I had made a mistake until I discovered the glass studio, and then I decided mm, this is the thing maybe that you want to do. Stay yes, after all. <laughs> okay. and I, I did. You made the right decision. I think yeah, so. For the benefit of all of, <laughs> all of us. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's very and, kind. And after all these years, you know, Toots, what does glass art mean to you? I know it probably means many, many different things, but can you tell us? Just some of them, mm. you know, what does that mean to you? Is it a way of expressing, you know, your thoughts, you know, as an artist? Uh, is it a, a way to demonstrate beauty as the way for you to share your sense of beauty with others? What does it mean to you? It's a medium that I found I could endlessly express myself through. Good. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of it has to do with the way it captures light, transmits light, mm -hmm. reflects light, um, captures and, and, and keeps okay. color. Yes. There's no other material that can sustain that perfect, beautiful, mm -hmm. intense color purely mm -hmm. forever. Yes. 
So it, as an artist, it's very interesting to work that mm -hmm. way. Okay. If I were painting, I would know that at some point the paint might fade. Mm -hmm. okay. And with glass, you know that's not going to happen. So no. what I'm making, I know it's always going to be there. And there's something really wonderful about that. Okay. I mean, that's a direct relationship that I have with it. I love, I love all the possibilities that has for creating sculpture and form. Okay. It's always a challenge. Yes, <laughs> of course. If you push it too far, it is going to break. Yeah. And so there is that endless fascination and challenge inherent okay. in the material that, that, that's always exciting. All right, but um, there must have been, you know, been times that you were frustrated by the fact that whether you're not, you know, creating the works that you want it, you know, to be, or is it in the process, like you said, if you push it too far or you didn't do, you know, some of the right temperature, or didn't cool it down at the right time, that it could break or it doesn't form the way and shape that you wanted it. So how do you overcome those, you know, difficulties or frustration? Um, by working a lot every day. <laughs> Continuously, <laughs> yes. <laughs> never give up. Continuously, yes. never giving up. Yeah. Um, I think no matter what you do, it, no matter what you do for your life's work, yes. you face challenges, disappointments, mm. um, excitement. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the same thing with, with working with glass. Yes. And uh, we well understand, as you said, this is your first trip, a visit to Taiwan. And we welcome you here, of course. But part of your, you know, purpose for coming to Taiwan is to be a part of this exhibition that's mm -hmm. entitled Why Glass and uh, to Zinsky 2016, of which I do have a brochure with me right here. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the exhibition itself? Uh, what were some of the, you know, the works that you have, you know, uh, contributed to the exhibition? Well, I have. Um, ten very recent works in the okay. exhibition, Good. all mm -hmm. the, mostly the larger scale of my work. Okay. Uh, the one that that you see there on the cover was actually mm -hmm. the last okay. piece that I completed for the exhibition, and mm -hmm. I was very excited making it because um, mm -hmm. I decided that I would just instead of you know making a piece that that I knew would be safe to make mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that I knew how to make, I would. I would um, really push it and, uh -huh. and, you know, maybe I would break it, but no. I thought it's worth it because if, if I don't, then yeah. I, I think it'll be an exciting piece. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's a very, you know, stretched and if you see the piece, it's very okay. convoluted and twisted and mm -hmm. folding in on itself oh, and the okay. colors are brilliant. Yes. Um, so. I do have a, <laughs> you know, full page, you know, a picture of the exhibit. Uh, of the work, and then uh, certainly you can see from this page, it's very colorful, and it's also very, uh, you know, uh, diversified in terms of color, shape, and form. Tell us a little more about the, you know, this particular piece of work, Toots, and uh, the name, and uh, how did you create it? Well, the name came after the piece because, okay. um, and I titled my my works in Italian because it's a language that I love. Okay. And after I left Europe, where I lived for 16 years mm -hmm. and, and spent time almost every month in Italy, okay. I didn't want to lose the language. So I began titling my pieces in Italian, so I would have to be thinking about the Italian language every okay. day. And also because since a lot of people don't speak mm -hmm. Italian, it's just the the, um, the iteration of the sound. Yes. That also means sounds to me like it belongs with the piece. So mm. it's, it's a combination of those things. But right. the word delirante, delirante means delirious, and oh, the piece okay. indeed... Um, when I looked at it, I, I just this, thought this piece is really yes. delirious, the way yes. it sort of just keeps turning in on itself and, yes. and almost collapsing but not. So, mm. And it was a real challenge. It was just this side of okay. being lost. All right. Besides this piece, De Laurenti, if I were to, you know, go to the exhibition, what would be, you know, your recommendation as a first timer mm -hmm. into the wonderful world of glass art? You know, what, what kind of, you know, state of mind that you would recommend for people like us going to the exhibition for the very first time? Shall we be, you know, heightening our expectations that we're going to find, you know, a lot of things that's attractive or just, you know, keep it casual? What do you think? 
I would say relax. <laughs> okay. Um, let yourself fall into it. Okay. Um, I think f for the most part, many of the pieces in the exhibition, and I'm not talking about mine, uh -huh. um, many of my colleagues worldwide yes. are, have works in this exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all very different. Mm -hmm. And um, each one has something quite remarkable okay. about it, um, right. both aesthetically and technically. I think when I look at the pieces, I, uh -huh. some of them, I wonder, how did they make that? Mm. And, 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 and I love that. I love to have my imagination and my curiosity, you know, ignited yes. um, to make me think yes. um, and wonder. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, that's the beauty of art is to make people just think in mm -hmm. a new way and, oh, yeah. and wonder and to have their imagination sort of ignited a bit. Yes. So, and precisely too, it's because not many people are familiar with the you know glass art, mm -hmm. so they may go see such an exhibition with a lot of question marks in mm -hmm. mind. How would you then think that we can do to try to shorten or eliminate that sense of unfamiliar neolarity with the works that we're looking at with the you know the, the world of glass art? How can we make it a little more personable? <laughs> well, first of all, I think that it's important to just go with a very open mind okay. and and let your curiosity like, run wild. Yes, <laughs> and and the way that pieces are displayed, for the most part, uh, mm. is quite quite well done because you can move around and you can see the light, the play of the light in the pieces, mm -hmm. and the transformation of the forms okay. and how the light accentuates that. And okay. the interesting thing about glass is that, especially a sculptural glass, is mm -hmm. that you never can, it'll never look the same twice. Because of course, the definitely. light can never yes. be the same mm -hmm. twice. You'll never be at exactly the same yeah. angle. Yes. You'll always see something new and different. And, so, and that's one of the things that's I'm ready to be surprised. Exciting. Pleasantly. Good. Yes. Good. Let's talk a little more about, you know, for average people in Taiwan. You know, the fo you know, the first exposure they might have had with, you know, glass art is through uh, two very well-known local artists, you know, from Liu Li Gongfang, mm -hmm. and they are Zhang Yi and Yang Huisan, his wife. And then the, tell us a little bit about the differences that you see between their works and your own, especially in the sense that when you look at, you know, many of the pieces that Liu Li Gongfang produces, you know, it usually carries some, you know, message, whether it's in religion, in terms of, you know, culture, but uh, that is not necessarily the case with the works that you produce. And uh, can you then, you know, give us a comparison as to what are the differences that you see between the Eastern and the Western mm -hmm. style of mm -hmm. glass art? Please. Well, I, I've always admired their work. Um, and we've actually been across from each other in the same room, okay. in the same gallery, in the same museum. Um, our, that is, our work has been. Okay. So I feel like we've been having this conversation for years. Yes, yes. But this, um, this past week is the first time that I've actually had okay. the pleasure of meeting them. And that was very exciting for me because yes. they, they were, you know, I love their work. It's, yes. It's, absolutely beautiful in mm -hmm. in the most you know deep and sort of uh, understandable mm -hmm. uh, if you will um, sense of the word okay I think that there's you know, clearly a great sense of history mm -hmm. of their own culture okay. in right. their work um, which, which is obvious I mean there are obvious references to to religion to Eastern religion to imagery mm -hmm. Um, but also used in a much more contemporary way. Mm -hmm. but, but you see that they are the product of their history. Yes. And although it may not be as evident because my work doesn't have any figurative, um, f figurative um, mm -hmm. references okay. in it, All right. I think that probably what we have in common is a sense of deep spirituality in yes. our relationship with the world mm -hmm. and a real appreciation of 
of beauty, mm -hmm. especially of the natural world, our, our okay. sense of, I think we share a great sense of wonder okay. in the natural world. Uh -huh. And uh, is this something common among some of the, you know, uh, uh, glass artists in this part of the world, where, you know, where their works carry some cultural or religious connotations mm -hmm. in it? Is this something that you see often, for example, for glass artists in Japan, uh, Korea, mm -hmm. you know, parts of Southeast Asia is, is something, you know, more common in Asia than compared to Europe and uh, North America. What do you think? Um, uh, I think that in many ways that Maybe true. I would agree okay. with you All on right. that. Um, and I think it, it has a lot to do with mm -hmm. the importance of the difference mm -hmm. in, you know, <laughs> Uh -huh. In the different parts of the world, mm -hmm. in in attitudes about contemporary art, and yes. you know, freedom, you know, the kind of things that people choose to express, and and what is beauty, I think, um, the you know, uh -huh. the edge of what is beauty has been um, pushed really far in yes. the West, sometimes to a point of being not understandable mm -hmm. to the general public. Um, but I think that's what artists' responsibility is, okay. is to, to explore mm -hmm. a broad mm -hmm. beauty in the broadest sense. It, it exactly. may be hard to understand that, you know, a piece of concrete with you know, <laughs> something sticking out of it is beautiful, and, mm -hmm. and certainly it's not beautiful in the sense that, you know, we find beauty in a rose. Okay. I mean, that's a very, I think that's easy to understand for mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. And and I think that the more you you look and the more that you start to understand and appreciate everything about the world, mm -hmm. um, you start to appreciate, you know, how amazing uh, yes. the form of a tool that someone, you know, working in the street is using and yes. that it was also created by a human being. Mm -hmm. And um, an industrial designer finds absolute sheer beauty in, you know, making a perfect coupling or joint or a machine that works. Mm -hmm. and, and for them, that's, that's yeah, it's beauty. beauty. Yes. Um, so I think that everyone can explore more deeply Mm -hmm. their own sense of mm -hmm. beauty and, and start to find beauty in many, many more things than, <laughs> than what you might initially think is beautiful. Of course. And, and that in doing that, you broaden your yeah. whole sense of appreciation of the world. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you know, some of the evidence for the contribution that the artists are making, you know, mm -hmm. to, you know, to the general mm -hmm. public. Mm -hmm. And let's come back to your own, you know, uh, works. And we understand that you have a very unique, you know, technique that you have termed it the filet de verre. And then uh, tell us a little bit about that particular technique where you fuse threads, you know, together to push further the exploration in color. And certainly we have seen from the, you know, the last piece that we show earlier that it's certainly very colorful. So tell us a little bit about that technique. Well, that technique actually goes back as far as my first introduction to glass, which was glass blowing. Okay. Um, and over the years, I started wanting to do something more than what I found that I could do blowing glass. And then at one point, returned and, and worked with film and video, and mm -hmm. it, at a point, stopped working with glass completely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then after about six years of working with, um, you know, spatial installations, often with cloth, even barbed wire, um, mm -hmm. I started to, and I had an idea in my head that I realized could only be done with okay. glass. So okay. I caved in and I went back to working <laughs> okay. with glass. Okay. Um, and, and, and then really got hooked again. It, it's it absolutely seductive material. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and one of the things I did was uh, spin hot mm -hmm. glass okay. around a very simple blown form, so it looked like a, a, a silkworm, okay. a, a silk cocoon. And and then I started getting more fascinated mm -hmm. by the fact that these really fine threads could create volume, but be much more light. Oh, okay. And 
And so I just started working with thread. Okay. And and then finally one day, I was making these very complex pieces that okay. involved a team of six people because parts of the work were blown, part were cast, part were fused together. And in order to get them all together mm -hmm. at the right moment so that they would fuse together, yes. I needed six people. And okay. one day I came in the studio and realized that I couldn't work without six people. And they wouldn't be there till that evening because okay. we all had day jobs, <laughs> of course. either teaching or, or doing do some other kind of work. Yes. Uh -huh. And I thought, this is crazy. I can't make my work by myself anymore. No. Mm -hmm. And that was the first day I actually made a piece only from fused thread. And that, so it was, that was the beginning of what I do now. Good. But the real beginning is blowing glass because there's some element of every other aspect of mm -hmm. forming glass mm -hmm. that goes into my work. So okay. it's an unusual hybrid of many other um, techniques of forming glass okay. and and it didn't have a name and one day um, a curator at the Corning Museum said well you have to give your you know what's the name of your technique and okay. I said well I really don't have one <laughs> right. and and he said well you know you should give it a name and mm -hmm. so I kind of on the spot said well let me see it's cooking it's thread it's you know it has a relationship with pot de verre, but it's not pot de verre. It's fusing threads of glass instead of fusing crushed glass. So okay. I'll call it filet de verre. That's so wonderful. So it, it, yes. it has a, you know, a kind of a delightful play of words about cooking and about okay. right. threads. I keep that in All right. Sure. And um, to, so we have about two minutes left uh -huh. in this part of the program. I want to ask you, in the process of creating your art, you know, how do you incorporate the sense of beauty as you see it into your art, whether it's through shape, form, color, or you know, whatever, you know, how, how do you then incorporate that sense of beauty into your work? Well, first not, of all... It's not easy <laughs> question. No, 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 it isn't. <laughs> but first of all, um, when you look at one of my pieces, remember that they all, they all start flat. So when I'm laying it out, the color is in all the different threads of glass. So okay. what I'm actually doing is, uh -huh. is painting with glass. I'm laying them out in splashes of color. Okay. And it's a very similar thought process as making a painting or a drawing because I yeah, you do. have done that. Yes. So I know. <laughs> um, but it's, it's just a different material. Okay. And then once I've completed the composition, mm -hmm. It, it looks like a big, round, flat mm -hmm. painting. Yes, canvas. Um, yes. But mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. <laughs> I have the advantage of being able to put it in a kiln and fuse it. So it all holds together. Um, mm -hmm. And once it's fused and, and, and still warm, yeah. I can start to give it form. Form, OK. All and right. for me, that, that gives it another dimension that's really important exactly. that I couldn't do mm -hmm. and that I can't do with a drawing or a painting. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm because yeah. then the whole thing comes to life in a different way yeah. and you see the inside and the outside and you see the, the other side through yeah, the inside, inside because of the light passing through it. So yes. it, it has um, so much more to, depth to yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. All right, that's certainly to the benefits of people who love, you know, your work and also mm -hmm. in the glass art. So it's what we're talking about, you know, some of the differences between the Eastern and the Western style of, you know, uh, you know, glass art, you know, and the, the different, you know, interpretations that artists may have about their work. And uh, let's look at your own, you know, uh, you know, artistic exploration, shall we say. In the process, you know, in addition to spending 16 years in Europe, as you mentioned, you have also spent time in Ghana and West Africa. Tell us how that experience, you know, living there for, you know, considerable amount of time has influenced your art, please. Well, I originally went to Ghana um, with uh, a great friend and, mm -hmm. and my son on a music recording project that was a sort of a fantasy project that okay. we devised really um, in response to the remarkable contemporary African music that was being brought to Europe just at the time that I arrived in okay. Europe. So right. I not only was confronting Europe, but I was confronted with this extraordinary music. 
Um, and, and one thing led to another, and mm -hmm. this fantasy project became a real project. So we actually were there doing the first digital recording that was ever done in Africa, which captured the, the reason that that was important to us was that it captured the huge, the broad range of, um, of the broad dynamic range of sound mm -hmm. inherent in African music, the, the powerful drums and the soft, the very soft voices and softer in instruments. Mm -hmm. um, but what happened there was just a marvelous confrontation of my own, you know, all the things that we're all brought up with without, without even realizing it that we take for granted. Um, and then you go to another part of the world with a remarkably different culture and different climate, different food, different everything. And suddenly you're confronted with all these things that you realize you took for granted. Then and they're not necessarily an ultimate truth. You know, <laughs> everyone comes up with their own recipe for for being alive and okay. for being well. Okay. And um, and experiencing that was a really important part of my growth personally and and ultimately as an artist. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that directly influenced my artwork when I came back was their their very free use of color and pattern. Um, and, and they're very famous in Ghana for their kente cloths, yes. mm -hmm. which are just remarkably mm -hmm. beautiful textiles. Okay. Um, and we spent a lot of time in that region and mm -hmm. discovered that um, traditionally they sing when they weave, and it helps them remember mm -hmm. the patterning. Okay. And, and I was fascinated by that, too, because I've always had a very direct relationship between music and my artwork. Mm, um, okay. So it made a lot of sense to me. But of when course. I came back, mm. um, I didn't do any of my, you know, I didn't even draw when I was there. I was just, I went there to be with people, to meet people, to experience a new culture, um, <laughs> to listen to this gorgeous music every day. And um, when I came back, I found that my whole sense of color had just exploded, had been completely freed from you know, whatever, you know, preconceptions about color that I had been brought up with. And mm -hmm. I realized that, you know, culturally, we all have sort of color preconceptions. Okay. It was fascinating for me to start to understand that. And it was even more fascinating to cast them all off. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it really brought my work to life and brought my use of color um, to a whole nother level. level. And mm -hmm. for me, it was just a great pleasure mm -hmm. to start, you know, feeling free to express all of that. So okay. it was a really important, important period of time okay. that we spent there. All right. Next, we're going to shift the focus on one of your mentors, if mm -hmm. I may call him that way. And uh, he is Mr. Dale Chihuly, mm -hmm. uh, who, of course, uh, your association with him started when you were one of the you know, first group of students mm -hmm. that he has taught at the you know, Rhode Island School of Design. And can you tell us a little bit about what kind of role did, you know, Dale play in your subsequent development as an artist? Mm -hmm. And also, what was his influence you know, on you and your subsequent work? Please. Well, all of us who were in that, um, you know, those first years of uh, Dale yeah, teaching, yeah. he was just out of grad school himself. Okay, all right. Um, and, and Glass was new. It was new at Rhode Island School of Design. It was new across the country as mm -hmm. a personal art form. Okay. And so it was a very exciting time. We didn't. Yes. It mm -hmm. felt like there was no limit. There yeah. was <laughs> there was no ceiling above our heads. We didn't have, you know, centuries of artists like painters have mm -hmm. centuries of the weight of the history of painting. Yes. On top of their heads, and we mm -hmm. didn't. So we had everything to explore. I mean that he Very didn't nice try yes. to influence us okay. in any particular aesthetic mm -hmm. direction. He was very, very open to whatever we wanted to do and experiment mm -hmm. with. He encouraged it. Um, the harder we worked, you know, the better he thought it was. And, you know, we were exploring broad, broad range of, uh, you know, aesthetics and ideas um, in, in terms of the whole group of students who were around me at the okay. time. And... Dale encouraged all of it. And for me, okay. that was very important. I didn't, mm -hmm. 
I didn't want anybody telling me what to do. <laughs> okay. I just, All right. But the encouragement was great. Um, one of the most important things I think that personally I learned from Dale uh -huh. was how to get things done. He's absolutely a master at getting things accomplished. Okay, and good. and Very that, efficient. Was, yes. that was, mm -hmm. um, you know, if plan A doesn't work, and you need to get from here to there, okay. then you switch to plan B so you can get to there. Okay. And, and I come from a family of perfectionists, and that okay. often stops you from finishing something because you get to, you know, if plan A, suddenly you hit a wall and uh -huh. you can't go forward, you get stuck. Okay. And, and, you, and you just, yeah. Dale just changes yeah. gears and Pursue the goes forward and, yes. and, and finds the, 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 the then the next best solution. Yeah, okay. That was really important for me All right. to learn that. And uh, to, we know that you occasionally teach you know, mm -hmm. short-term intensive courses. Uh -huh. Can you tell us that, you know, was some of the things that you pick up from Dale will also be part of your teaching style today? Uh, do you try to give, for example, your students as much you know, freedom and expression mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. And also, what will be some of the, you know, best feedback that you get from your students today? Because you're very well established in the field of glass art. What will be some of the things that your students can bring to you as you continue to create, you know, to, you know, produce works that you're satisfied, you're happy with? Well, that was uh, the last part of your question is uh, actually a great one because yes. students bring a lot to their teachers, and of it's course. why I I love teaching. I love working, especially okay. with young students when mm -hmm. they're trying to discover their find their way. Yes, um, it's such a vital time for mm -hmm. everybody, um, and I think it's important for a teacher to listen, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. really listen. All right. Listen to what they're trying to say because it takes a long time to figure out how, how to express yourself. Yeah. Um, it's sort of scary sometimes, mm -hmm. and sometimes what you want to express, you might feel uncomfortable with expressing. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you need to. Yes. As a, you know, as whether you're expressing it with writing or with art or with dance or with theater or whatever, uh -huh. there's something there that, you know, people need to express. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that the most important thing that I try to do and that I learned from, from people like um, not only Dale, but Idolo Skanga, Buster Simpson, who's a fantastic artist who I had the mm -hmm. good fortune to you know, spend time with during those years, was the thing that they all had in common was mm -hmm. their interest in young artists and, and their interest in their ideas and, and the, their, the uniqueness okay. of their ideas and, and not being judgmental and mm -hmm. thinking, oh, well, you know, that I don't really like that <laughs> work. What are they doing? You know, I don't want them in my class. And I've seen teachers do that. Okay. Um, as long as you were working hard, you know, they were encouraging. And I try and do that when I teach, to All really right. listen to students, because I had that gift from some of my best teachers. Exactly. To really listen and just encourage them to not be afraid to express themselves. Okay. and. Right. And finally, Tuz, I'm going to ask you, uh, some artists may not be comfortable talking about this, but, you know, how do you then balance between art and commerce? <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, you know, artists, of course, they have wonderful ideas. They may be, you know, express it, but they also got to eat. They also mm -hmm. got to survive them, you know, selves financially. How do you then balance between the two? You know, sometimes can be competing goals. That's a tough one. Yes. Um, it's a tough one for, for people in general, I think. Yes. <laughs> um, and it's a tough one for artists because mm -hmm. it's art is such a subjective field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you might be making fabulous work, and I yeah. know plenty of artists who that make do that. really mm -hmm. fantastic work but don't enjoy any commercial success. And it really breaks my heart when I see that. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder if I would have the courage to keep going Okay. If if I hadn't been fortunate enough to have, you know, success in the, in, the in the larger earlier, art market yes. mm -hmm. um, with my work, it's okay. it's a it's a constant challenge. Yes. It takes a lot of hard work, mm -hmm. um, and it takes you, you know paying attention to what's happening in the world yes. and where it's happening and where it's not happening, um, and you know finding 
finding ways to introduce your work in, in new areas. Yeah. And and for me, it's very exciting to finally be yeah. in China and yeah. and um, have my work exhibited here. Exactly. And then the, also, you know, the continued pursuit of artistic expression, you know, being happy, I think is a very important part of that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, it's been a wonderful experience throughout the taping today to learn so much more about your work, about the wonderful world of glass art. And we have also learned that you are, you know, you were the first contemporary glass artist, you know, whose work were acquired by the Museum of Modern Art. And subsequently, two of your pieces were commissioned by MoMA. You know, so this is uh, quite an honor, recognition. Tell us a little bit about that experience and what did that recognition mean to you, please? Well, honestly, it, I thought it was someone playing a joke on me. Oh, really? At first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we had just returned from Africa, and and this phone call arrived late at night, and a very soft voice, you know, gave uh, me this good news. But uh, I thought it was a joke. I really? thought it was someone disguising their voice because MoMA didn't have any reputation for acquiring yes. glass art. Mm -hmm. um, so. Actually, in my own thinking and aspiration, I hadn't even gotten that far yet. No. I, I was still pretty early on in my career. Oh, okay. Um, and it turned out that it was true, which yes. was wonderful. And, yeah. and then I had to go and present it. I was scared to death, actually. <laughs> I could hardly breathe. Um, and uh, it, it was a wonderful experience. It, yes. was, it was really exciting. It was, I, I, I was uh -huh. sort of in yeah, a state you were of disbelief. Overwhelmed. I, I, I was imagine. overwhelmed. Yes. Um, and, and certainly it was a nice little step for my <laughs> career yes. um, because it gave my work some credibility and some mm -hmm. recognition. And, no, and that always helps because it helps you keep going. Yeah. Um, then they, you know, they commissioned two more pieces, which yes. was... Mm -hmm. Also, uh, yeah. really I see on the cake. And, yes. <laughs> Additional yes. recognition. Yes, yes. And, and it was it was also really um, it was good for my fellow artists too because yes, of course. the fact yeah. that that ground had been broken and that door had been opened mm. um, meant that they then yeah. started considering yeah, acquiring your trailblaze of paths for them. Other, yes. Yeah, mm. without meaning to it just yeah. <laughs> it, it just happened. happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. So, um, mm -hmm. and I was young, so it was, it was wonderful. It, yes, it, it all course. helped enable me to do what I love to do every day, which is yes. be in my studio and make my work. Okay, and to, as a person and also as an artist, were these, you know, you know, recognition, you know, people, you know, appreciating your work, would that be, you know, a fact, would that later on become factors of motivation for you to continue exploring, to continue to push the limits of your artistic, you know, uh, sentiments to the next level, or would it become uh, somewhat of an inhibition? You know, things you have already, you know, been there. I've Good already question. done that. I can't produce things that you know doesn't measure up to that standard. That's that's How, a very good question, and it's you. something that um, comes up in my. Um, discussions with students who okay. are saying, how do we get our first show, you know? And I said, you're putting the cart before the horse. Yes. The most important thing first is that you you strive to make work that means something to you. Yes, mm -hmm. that you're comfortable with, yes. Mm -hmm. That is honest, yeah. that has integrity, mm -hmm. and because it has to first mean something to you. How can it mean something to someone else if it yeah. doesn't mean yes. something to, to you? And if you reach that, that you know, center of yourself and you're able to express your deepest sentiments, mm -hmm. even abstractly through your work, uh -huh. that will connect with another person. It will yes. connect with their <laughs> deepest sentiments because we all have things in common. Yeah. Um, and and. And what you asked about, is it dangerous to, mm. you know, can, I think I'll translate it to say, can you become too easily then self-satisfied uh, yes. if mm -hmm. you're getting good response to your work? And that is a danger. Yeah. And it's something that, you know, that is important to keep. First of all, 
allowing yourself to feel good about because it does feel good when people, okay. you know, appreciate your work. It, yeah, it's exactly. a wonderful connection mm -hmm. um, with another human being. Mm. Um, but not to become complacent and, yeah, exactly. and self-satisfied and mm. keep pushing further, even into, you know, pushing the boundary maybe into an area that people don't think is so beautiful or like what's she doing now or what's he doing now and mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's not so interesting no. and mm -hmm. and I've been actually very fortunate uh -huh. to um, have art dealers who mm -hmm. gave me who who didn't do that okay who just said make what you want you right. know just keep going um, wonderful and yes. You know, I'd say, well, yeah, we can schedule a show, but, <laughs> you know, what if I'm in, you know, a year and a half when the time comes, I'm, I'm not going to be doing the work that looks like this. No. And, and yes. you know, the best dealers say, just go for it, you yes. know, just keep pushing. All right. And, okay. and so I've been, I've been very lucky. Yeah, yeah. Good. And uh, I'm going to ask you something that, you know, maybe a lot of artists may not be comfortable with, which is... If I were to ask you to describe your, you know, art, your works <laughs> in as few of words as possible, <laughs> what would they be and why? Um, How would you describe your own work? I feel like a deer in the headlights. Caught <laughs> <laughs> there, yes. Um, well, uh -huh. um, uh -huh. sometimes I, you know, I think sometimes, you know, the work that I do now has a certain kind of classical sense of beauty about it. Yes, and mm -hmm. no that, doubt. You yes. know, mm -hmm. I I just enjoy and feel good about making. Mm -hmm. There have been times when my work was, you know, very edgy, very um, rough, very political, mm -hmm. um, not um, not mm -hmm. beautiful in the beautiful sense, and I think that. There was a period of time when I um, uh -huh. consciously turned away from that and okay. and um, be, stepped back and, and wondered why, you know, why mm. my work was being so, my creativity was, I was allowing it to be so in, influenced mm -hmm. by some really terrible things that were happening in the world that I had to respond to. Okay. But then I wanted to, I consciously made a decision to push that back away from uh, you know my my deep inner self um, okay and and to use my creativity to to create something beautiful in the world instead of just responding to mm. the ugliness yeah. oh, yes. in the world all the bad news yes so, yes um, I hope my work gives people joy no of course and uh, let me ask you what is the most important element or elements you know, in terms of glass art creation. Is this something that, you know, you know I, I know artistic inspiration doesn't come, you know, every morning when you wake up. You know, it could be because you met somebody, had a conversation, or after the taping today, you felt, hey, you know, this host, Raymond, is a wonderful person. I, he gave me some inspiration that I can do the next work. Mm -hmm. Or is it because that you read a book, you saw a movie, uh, you went to a, a show today and then gave you some, you know, sense of inspiration. So uh, yeah, what is the most important element? You talk about earlier about being open-minded. You know, other than that, are there any other elements that we can, you know, try to possess or secure? I think the most important element <laughs> is actually the complexity of all of those things combined together. together. Okay. Um, that go into making what sometimes can seem to be a very simple work of art, mm. even a min minimalist work yes. of art, mm -hmm. has a world of experience and thought okay. that has gone into it. And, yeah. and I think that it's why we, you know, we all can respond to certain works of art, you know, one that's very complex and very complicated and one that's mm -hmm. utterly, utterly pared down and simple because okay. they both have an a sense of integrity mm -hmm. and a, a depth, even even if you can't really like describe what that depth yeah. is, yes. okay. you feel it. Okay. And I and I think that the more anybody learns, mm -hmm. um, the more that knowledge inevitably is behind the work that you do. Okay, 
Good. Finally, before we end... And a great conversation is always a wonderful (laughs) inspiration. (laughs) Thank you. And finally, before we end the program today, you know, there could be, you know, hundreds or thousands of young people who are watching our program since we're global. Uh, They, you know, learn from our conversations, especially from you, that, you know, glass art is a wonderful field. They may want to, you know, be involved, make a commitment Mm -hmm. to pursue that as a career option. What would be your advice to them? Try it. Go okay. for it. Go you for know? it. Yes. I teach kids when they're seven years old. Seven years old is my cutoff. That's oh, the, okay. the young limit. Okay. Um, but I've taught many s- people starting at seven years old to work okay. with glass. All right. And um, let your imagination go wild. Mm-hmm. You know, just express yourself. Put everything you want into it. Your anger, your love, your, you know, your curiosity, your imagination. Uh, just right. put it all into it and, all and, right. and just do it. And the more, the harder you work at it, the better you'll get at it, mm-hmm. and the more satisfying it'll be. Okay. And uh, what if they come to a, you know, a bottleneck in the creation process? You know, I mean, they're not happy with their work, and they want to do something, they're not able to get there. You know, how do you then overcome those obstacles? I go listen to some good music. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's wonderful. But Take other- a break. Take, Take a, a break. break. Learn right. something completely, completely different from that. Okay. Um, It'll, it's like, you know, like leaving Taiwan and going to San Francisco. Yes, um, exactly. You know, after a while, you like, no, oh, I want to get out of here. You know, yeah. we all feel that even if we live in the most beautiful place in the world, you want to go someplace different. We're exactly. curious people. Mm-hmm. You go to San Francisco, you have a good time there. You come back and you go, yeah, Taiwan's yeah. really pretty I'm good place fresh. to be. Yes, I'm, yes, I'm ready here. to go. And yes. it's the same thing, I think, with with. Um, Young people. Making, yeah. making artwork. Sometimes yeah. you need a break. Okay, good. And t- it's certainly wonderful to have you on the program today. I have learned a lot from our conversation. Certainly want to wish you and your family all the best in the future. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching our program today. I'll see you next time on Macroview Television.